Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's Monday, December 6, 2021, Morquoit Meeting Room, Mashby Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road North, Mashby, Mass. Broadcast live on local cable, Channel 18, Street Live on Town of Mashby website, www.mashbyma.gov, Channel 18. It is 6.30 and we are in open session and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, discussion and approval of the following Monday, November 8, 2021, regular session. Monday, November 15, 2021, regular session. And Monday, November 29, 2021, regular session. Second. Roll call, Tom? Yes. David? Yes. Andy? Yes. Yes. And yes, thank you. Public comment. Brian Whedon. Good evening. Uh, Juanina Khan, good evening. Um, Mashpee Select Board. Natasweez um, Moskota, Natomas Masipia. I said my name is Bearheart and I come from Mashpee. Um, as some of you know, I have the honor and privilege of now representing the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe as the tribal chairman. Um, and I wanted to come here and formally invite um, the select board um, to another joint meeting between the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribal Council and the um, Board of Selectmen. Um, I think it's been long overdue. Um, I feel there are some issues that um, we need to address together, um, such as our wastewater and so on and so forth. Um, and also what meaningful consultation looks like. Um, I think that you know, with any kind of projects that we look at, um, you also should be getting the perspective of the Aboriginal people that have been here, um, because some of these are sacred sites and so on and so forth. Um, and we really don't wanna see any more graves desecrated or anything else like that. Um, so I just wanted to formally come here and invite the select board to a meeting. Um, we can coordinate that through the secretary and the town manager yes. um, and just wanted to give you that opportunity. So thank you. Thank Thanks. you, Brian, very much. Okay, 635 public hearing 2022 annual alcoholic beverage and entertainment license renewals. Pursuant to chapter 138 of Massachusetts General Laws, Board of Selectmen acting as a local licensing authority for the town of Mashpee will conduct a public hearing on the 2022 annual alcoholic beverage and entertainment license renewals in the town of Mashby. Said hearing will be held Monday, December 6, 2021 at 6.35 p.m. in the Wakoit Meeting Room at Mashby Town Hall, 16 Great Neck Road, North Mashby, Mass, 02649. Comments may be submitted via email to bosmashbymass.gov prior to meeting date and time. Okay, the public hearing is open. We'll start with the package store, all alcohol. Andy's Market, The Barn, Best Buy Beverage, Inc., Liberty Liquors, South Cape Wine and Spirits, Commons Convenience, Mashby Mart, Mashby Mini Mart, and Rory's. Have any questions? I do, I do have some questions. <clears throat> it's one of these things that's been bothered me for years, and I bring it up occasionally, it's the, the signage in the front windows. And I know these are, well, they could be hard economic time, so I don't know that it'll affect the uh, um, liquor stores or the beer and wine, but uh, I think that sometimes I see the signs and I, I don't see, a, it, I think it's, is it 20 or 30% of the window is supposed to be covered for signage? And I, in many of the cases I see it's substantially more than that. And I, I just think it's time that we should clean that up. I mean, I'm not suggesting we have to jump all over everybody and you know, wipe up their signage, but at least let's start making a move to um, clean up the signage that's in the windows to, to where it's allowed by, the, by our, uh, our, our building and uh, uh, 
uh, building code and business codes. What came to my attention today is that our restaurants are, when they apply for their license, the fire chief signs off, the building commissioner signs off, and there's an inspection done. But nothing is done with our package stores. There's no inspection done. So what I think what we should do is hold off on the package store licenses till our next meeting and have an inspection done on the signage that are done that is in the windows of each package store. And I would say that their entrance door going in and out should be clear that a cut, it comes down to safety. Uh, customer going in and out of the store. There was a couple of that I looked at today, because it was brought to my <coughs> attention, that their, wind, their whole door is covered. <coughs> and their windows are covered with advertisement. And I'm not sure of the bylaw of how much coverage is supposed to be. Right. But I think we should have an inspection done on the package stores before we issue the license. It was yeah. brought to our attention this afternoon, and uh, we are assigning it to the appropriate personnel and uh, more than happy to uh, report back once we have findings. Okay. Uh, but uh, I don't know the answer in terms of how much is covered or exactly what is permissible by pilot, but I do confirm tonight with you that it is being checked into okay. uh, as of this afternoon and we should have something for you at the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Ma Madam Chair, if I can uh -huh. jump, just jump in on that. I mean. I you know, I'm not looking to penalize any of the businesses. I don't want to make it a difficult issue for the yeah. um, reissuing the, the license. Um, but um, as long as we're moving in the right direction and if the appropriate members are coming, going out, and they're going to look and request them to take down the signage that's uh, beyond what they're allowed, um, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem at all moving forward as long as I know that we do have staff no, I, going I, out. I think that we should have it looked at, Tom, and then um, and because like we look at our restaurant, all alcohol and and the clubs, they all have to be signed off by the authority. So I think that these should to also be. I mean, I, I get you. <clears throat> I get your point, but I, you know, I just want to be certain that I, we have time. Right, and. Um, and it is design plan review has all of the mm -hmm. plans. I sat on that for how many years, and uh, it was always a big deal. And it seems like we lost that somehow. So, okay. Well, thank you. So we will. So are we looking to extend the public hearing on this to a date certain? On the for the package store. To when? When is our next meeting? Uh, the next meeting yeah. is what? Yeah. Uh, the 20th? 13th. We have a meeting for the boards, but 20th right. is the. So next. it would be the 20th. It's the regular one. Regular okay. One. So till the, just the package door to be December 20th. Is there, any public comment for is there any public comment on the renewal of the package doors? No? I make a motion that we uh, extend the public hearing on the package store list um, till December 20th, 635. Second. Roll call, Tom? Yes. David? Yes. 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 Okay. Restaurant, all alcohol. Asia, blue. Bobby Burns, Cafe Trivi, Cape Cod Coffee, Magna Inc., Estia, Finally Dino's, The Lanes, 99 Restaurant, Quashnet Valley Country Club, Sienna, Sopranos, and Wicked. Any questions on those? Any change in the entertainment license, specifically around outdoor entertainment, any of these? I don't Not believe so. Nothing that I've heard. No. Mm -hmm. Nothing that we're aware of. Okay, can we just confirm that? And went before the licenses get cut. Did you want to uh, extend this one also? No. No? Okay. Do I have a motion? Well, any comment? Or comment? Any questions, David, Tom? Yeah, I just have a just full disclosure. Sienna, my, my mm -hmm. kids have all worked there, so okay. I don't think it's a conflict of interest. And but Tom? In, in I, actually, I meant to say that. Good call. Um, Estia, obviously, I, I'm, I've been doing the extension, so I would step aside on, on the uh, approval of that. Okay. But everybody else is okay. Any um, questions from the audience? 
We're all set. And I'll make a motion that we approve all the restaurant, all alcohol licenses as proposed with no changes from 2021 to 2022 in outdoor entertainment. Second. Roll call, John? Yes. Andy? Yes. 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 Thank you. Restaurant Walt Malt, Bangkok, Thai cuisine. Did we ever get a confirmation on approval for that one, Wayne? Um, I, don't, I don't have anything into tonight's uh, that was given to me, so I couldn't tell you, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Says it'll be scheduled by the end of the month. So. Okay, so we'll hold off on that one. Okay. Or we can make it contingent. Contingent, contingent upon yeah. the inspection. Contingent upon the building and inspection. The okay. Inspections. And Zoe's. And Zoe's. Do I have a second? So, yeah, so a motion. Hey, well, comment. Comment. Anybody? No? Comments no time. comment? Okay. All right, I make a motion we close the public hearing. No, we're not done. Oh, well, okay. Just on the restaurant wine and malt. So I need a motion to approve Bangkok okay. Thai cuisine. Contingent upon the building and fire inspection approval and Zoe's and pizza. So, so moved. Second. Roll call. <clears throat> yes. 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 Okay. Commercial club, all alcohol, New Seabury Country Club and Willow Bend Country Club. Any questions? None. Concerns? None. Okay. Do I have a motion? Public. Anything? I did. I asked. Okay. Motion? Make a motion we approve commercial club, all alcohol, New Seabury and Willow Bend. Second. Roll call, Don. Yes. 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 Okay. Farmers Brewery pouring malt only, knockabout beer company, and Cape and Islands distillers. Any questions, concern for the board? The audience? Do I Make have a motion, a motion? We approve knockabout and Cape and Islands distillers for farmers brewery pouring malt only. Okay. Second. Now you can close the public hearing. Uh, make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Roll call? Yes. 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 Okay, now a motion. Make a motion we approve. And hold off on. Approve all licenses as prior previously moved with the exception of. Package stores. Package stores. All alcohol. All alcohol and wine and malt, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep, until which have been extended till December 20th. 20th. Right. Second. Roll call? John? Yes. 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 David. Yes. Yes. Thank you, everybody. A little trick there. Look at Tom and asked me. I know, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Good thing I'm paying attention. <laughs> okay. Uh, public hearing. <clears throat> Great Neck Road North and Route 130 intersection proposed runabout. Ashby Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing Monday, December 6, 2021, at 6 40 p.m. in the Wakoit meeting room at Ashby Town Hall to discuss the potential replacement of the traffic signal at the intersection of Great Neck Road North and Route 130 Main Street with a roundabout. Purpose of the meeting will be to review conceptual design plans for the roundabout. The board of Selectmen will make a decision on whether to proceed further with the project. The roundabout at the intersection is being considered because of the more frequent queues for westbound traffic on Route 130 and northbound traffic on Great Neck Road North, particularly for the morning and afternoon commutes. Preliminary, preliminary analysis of the roundabout versus traffic signal shows an improvement in the level of service for vehicles traveling through the intersection, better traffic movement, and shorter delays. If you are unable to attend the meeting, you may submit comments to the Board of Selectmen by emailing bos at mashbmass.gov. Any questions on the conceptual plans can be directed to Catherine Laurent, DPW <coughs> Director at 508-539-1420, or Laurent at mashbmass.gov. Thank you, Andy. Catherine? Good evening. Um, so I think uh, the public notice was pretty self-explanatory, but just uh, to, I guess, uh, remind the board and, and the members of the, the public, um, this was first brought before you um, on October 5th of 2020. Um, it was in response to some concerns that had been expressed to the town manager about the, the traffic at the intersection. Um, we had reached out to the Cape Cod Commission, and they did, um, 
some sketches just to see whether or not uh, a roundabout would actually fit within the town-owned land. Um, and it was found that, yes, a, a, a roundabout would be possible there. Um, so on that meeting of, of October 5th, the board decided to move forward with at least a conceptual design plan for further discussion. I have with me tonight Jill McLaughlin um, from Stantec. She is going to go through the, uh, the conceptual design with the board, um, explaining um, what was looked at, what the benefits of a roundabout would be, and is available then to answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you, Catherine, and good evening, everyone. My name is Jill McLaughlin, and I work for Stantec, and I am the project manager for the concept design project for this intersection. So tonight we're going to, or I'm going to give everyone just a quick overview of what the existing conditions are at the intersection, and then we'll show you what the design for the proposed roundabout looks like. At the end, um, I'm certainly available to also answer any questions or take any feedback and comments from everybody. So first I wanna orientate everybody to the configuration of this graphic here. So the roadway that runs from left to right on your screen, um, so this roadway here is Route 130, and then the roadway that runs from top to bottom is Great Neck Road North. And to the right of Great Neck Road, let's see if I can get rid of this. So, sorry about that, it just popped up. Let's see, let's do this. Okay, so to the right of Great Neck Road North is Mashby Town Hall, which is here. And over on the left is where we have the Mashby Veterans Garden and Park area. And then on the north side of Route 130, this is where we have the two businesses. So the Dunkin' Donuts business is the one on the left, and then the Mashby Country Store is at the intersection, and then we also have a couple of residential properties here. So this, this intersection is actually registering as a high crash location, and what that means is that it is top 5% within the region. Um, so I think it really supports what everybody's already seeing, that there is a lot of congestion in this area, and we wanna do something to improve it so that um, the safety of the intersection doesn't get worse. So as you are traveling along Route 130 South, so that's coming from the left heading to the right, uh, under the existing condition, there's a right turn lane that's formed for traffic to get to Great Neck Road North. Coming from the Great Neck Road North approach, the single lane splits to a double lane at the intersection. The lane on the right is for direct access to Route 130 South and then the lane on the left will either bring traffic through to the Mashby Country Store or allow folks to turn left to go on Route 130 North. From the Route 130 North approach, so that's from the right side of the screen traveling to the left. Um, so that is a single lane through the intersection, but it is widened a little bit, and that's really because there's a lot of left turns there, but no left turn, designated left turn lane, so that widened pavement tends to act as a bypass lane for vehicles trying to get around somebody turning left. So when we're looking at intersection design, we collect traffic data or existing traffic data and then project it to a year in the future because when we build the improvements, we don't want them to fail 10 years down the road. Um, so with this project, we looked at about a 20-year projection for the traffic numbers. We apply a growth rate and then analyze the intersection and how it performs. So this graphic here shows in red what the anticipated queue lengths will be in 2041 um, under the existing conditions. So this is just if we maintain the existing signal as is. So what this shows is our worst queues are going to be observed along Great Neck Road North and also on the northern approach for route, route 130 North. So for Great Neck Road North, the queues will back up to just past Meeting House Road, and along Route 130, it would extend to the Main Street Village area. So this is what our proposed roundabout design is, look, is going to look like. So heading from 
Great Neck Road North to Route 130 South, we provide a bypass lane to move right turning traffic through that intersection faster. And then all other approaches to the roundabout maintain a single lane. Um, so what we see most with roundabouts is that they offer improved safety over a signalized intersection or a traditional signalized intersection. A big reason for that is because the speeds are slower through a roundabout. As people are approaching the roundabout, we slow them down to about 25 miles per hour and then they circulate within the roundabout at 25 miles per hour. So that gives people more time to react and to make decisions, to figure out whether or not they can fit within a gap or to figure out if they need to stop short because somebody's cutting them off. Um, so with the safety improvements for roundabouts, when we're looking at um, a comparison between a roundabout and a signalized intersection countrywide, we can see up to a 90% reduction in fatality crashes and a 76% reduction in injury crashes. We also see improvements in safety for um, pedestrians and bicyclists. So the pedestrians recognize typically a 30 to 40% reduction in crashes and bicyclists a 10% reduction. Um, so I, I mentioned that we have a single lane roundabout here the orange section around the inner area of the roundabout is what we call a truck apron. So this allows your larger vehicles to get through the roundabout area. They're allowed to ride up on that. It is slightly raised or sometimes textured to keep regular passenger vehicles off of that, but it will allow larger tractor trailer vehicles or emergency vehicles through easily. We're also proposing a shared use path around the roundabout to allow access for bicyclists and pedestrians. So we'll tie into the existing network that's there at the intersection at the Mashpee Veterans Garden and Park area and also near the, the town hall parcel. And then we'll also add a shared use path on the north side so that we can maintain access or provide better access for pedestrians walking along the north wanting to get to the Mashpee Country Store or Dunkin' Donuts. Um, we're also with this design proposing driveway modifications to, to again really, we're, it's that safety aspect of what can we do to make the area safer and to help reduce those crashes. So what we know is that the larger delivery vehicles for Dunkin' Donuts and the Mashpee Country Store um, neither need to either back up from, in the case of Dunkin' Donuts, or back up into Route 130 when they're making deliveries. Um, so the, the remodification or restructuring of the driveways here was really to address that and try to keep it so that any of the movements for the larger delivery vehicles are happening within the parking lot area. Um, so what we're proposing is to close the driveway that's directly at the intersection at the Mashpee Country Store and the driveway on the right at Dunkin' Donuts and combining those two into a shared driveway within the town property that's between those two parcels. And so what that will allow is if a delivery vehicle is coming along to come to the Mashpee Country Store, the delivery vehicle is able to turn into this driveway and what they'll do is they'll pull forward a little bit and then back up. And we have this area here a little bit wider to give them space to, to park and then make deliveries to the country store. And while they're parked there, we can still maintain access in and out of this driveway for either Dunkin' Donuts or the Mashpee Country Store. Um, one of the things that we had heard with an earlier meeting is that sometimes with the larger delivery vehicles, um, that customers can't get into the Mashpee Country Store because the delivery vehicle's taking up all that area. So by providing the space for them, and we're still able to get customers in and out of the country store. For the westernmost Dunkin' Donuts driveway, we've shifted it, so it is about in this area here, so we've shifted that further to the west as well to give us, again, more room for circulation with the larger tractor trailers. 
Can I ask a question, Joe? Sure. When you're coming down Route 130, say it's a big tractor trailer. Yeah. And he's going to take a left into the country store sure. entrance. And then have to back up? Yep, so they'll come around, come in this way a little bit, and then back oh, up. Oh, back up inside. Yeah. Because I'm wondering about the flow of traffic coming by that's going to stop that a little bit. Yeah, so they'll, they'll be fully into the driveway area before they start backing up so it wouldn't affect 130. Yep. So for the Dunkin' Donuts access, they would come in through this driveway here, and a large vehicle would come in, pull forward here, and then back up to access the loading area that's in the back corner here. This blue line here that we have shown, um, the, the grades are steep in this area, so this just represents the approximate limits of a retaining wall that we would build with the project to make sure that we're not um, negatively impacting the wooded area here as much as we can, and then also to avoid impacts to the adjacent parcel. So this graphic here shows the resulting um, anticipated 2041 traffic queues with the roundabout design. Um, and I, I should mention too, the queues that we're presenting tonight are for July. Um, so we're trying to represent worst case what you would be experiencing. If it's off season or if it's off peak hours, the queue lengths will be less than what's shown. Um, so for the roundabout, we notice a significant reduction in the queue lengths along Great Neck Road North. Previously, it was shown running just past Meeting House Road. And we also notice a significant reduction for the Route 130 North approach, whereas previously that was extending to just about Main Street. The Route 130 South approach does get longer for queues just because we're able to process more vehicles on the other approaches now, but it's still operating at an acceptable level of service for an intersection. Um, and just to show everybody the two side by side, um, I copied the earlier graphic next to this one just so I could flip through between them so you could see the differences on 130 and Great <coughs> Neck Road. Madam Chair, question? I, I have one too. Have you contacted the owners of the businesses? Yes. Okay. Yep. We've had an earlier meeting with them. Uh, was it back in October? Uh, it was, uh, July 15th. July. I'm not even close. <laughs> it was July 15th we had met yeah. with them. Yes. Ahead, David. Yeah. Uh, what, what stats are you, are you using for your uh, formula for your projected queues um, as growth rates, as uh, you know, the, your baseline? Um, what numbers are you pulling from? Um, so I think that I'll, you know, I'll have to confirm with our traffic engineer and get back to you on that just to know we're for sure. Um, but we usually coordinate with the Cape Cod Commission that looks for the traffic data within the region and they come up with growth rates. So for the different um, regions on Cape Cod, um, if, if I had to guess, I would say it's somewhere around a half a percent per year, but that's complete guess. Um, I can follow up and find that out for you for sure, so I, I get you an accurate number. The, my question being, uh, you know, I think post-COVID, we're finding a lot more people uh, year-round residency, mm -hmm. and, you know, the traffic seems consistent uh, longer periods, uh, not just the summer months. Uh, I know you, it sure. reflects a, a July scenario. Yep. But, you know, with more and more people are uh, moving here from mm -hmm. suburbs and stuff because they could work remotely. So I'm not sure if the past numbers are going to be completely accurate <coughs> to mm -hmm. capture the, 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 the future growth rates of the town and traffic in that area. Right, right. Yeah, and I know that's something we're still waiting on to like really, really settle down and see what's going to happen long term. Um, and I, I would still expect the numbers to be less, maybe, you know, not 50% or not as much of a reduction. Um, but I, I would still think that the July counts are more conservative because that's when you're getting, on, in addition to the people that live here year round, you're also getting all the visitors to the Cape during the summer months. Um, Follow-up question was, um, you know, 
uh, what the responses were from the advisors. Yeah, I know that um, access was a big concern for them. Um, and I know they're, <laughs> they are here too tonight. Um, so access and making sure that deliveries could still get in and out of their parcel. And um, they were the ones who had mentioned that uh, the customers can't always get into the parking lot when deliveries are being made with the larger vehicles. So by having that little backup area, customers can still get into their business? Correct, yes. Okay. I don't the, 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 one, the one that I'm really concerned with, because it looks like um, the proposal may accommodate uh, Jen and Hendrick's home, um, access to that, mm -hmm. but the Hicks home, that one, you know, I, I don't know how that's gonna play out, um, the little house to the uh, east on Route 130. Yep, so that access would remain as it is today. Here. So we can still allow left turns. So if they're coming through the roundabout, we could still allow left turns into this parcel into here. It also gives them an opportunity to, to um, instead of taking a left onto Route 130, they could always utilize the roundabout to make a U-turn, which is sometimes safer for people. I mean, yeah, they'd have to go that way because, I mean, you'd be dodging two lanes as they merge together on the eastbound. Yep, it's, there's still, so there's Just two change. lanes here, so they would be turning into the, the middle lane, and then the merge does happen right after that. The, the other thing is, you know, that, that way you're bringing two lanes together over here, it just, that seems kind of problematic in, in my interpretation. If I can just uh, comment, this is a conceptual design. If the, the board does decide that you would like to move it forward, some of these, um, I think, comments we would look at in more detail. So this is, this is by no means uh, what the final plan may look like. Um, this is uh, the conceptual design of, of the, I guess, the, the best scenario that, that we thought would work um, to address the traffic concerns that we have on the, the roadway itself and at the intersection. Obviously, we want to accommodate the abutters as best we can, but uh, I guess speaking from a DPW perspective, you know, our concern, our primary concern really is with um, what's happening on the roadway um, for the, the users of the roadway. And we're taking more of the land from our side than on the other we side. Are, we are not impacting um, the, the private properties at all. I guess the benefit of this location is, is that um, you know, the, the <coughs> sites to the south are all town-owned parcels, and then we do have the, the, the town-owned property between the Dunkin' Donuts and the country store, which allows us to, to create that, that common driveway. And then, if I can just um, add a couple more comments. Um, for the um, Dunkin' Donuts, the realignment of the driveway um, further to the west um, actually will improve sight distance. I know a lot of the, the um, complaints we hear from, from customers at Dunkin' Donuts have to do with the lack of, of sight distance as they're trying to come out and perhaps take a left turn. Um, by moving it further west, we are improving that. Um, so I think the, the customers now, I've, I've heard that some people actually take a right and then go down and turn around at the Herring Run mm -hmm. because they're not comfortable um, taking a left. So, so we are addressing that. Um, and then as... But doesn't that work to the disadvantage for if you're taking, going eastbound? If you're turning out of that going eastbound, you're closer to the corner as where, where cars are coming see. around the corner, that's yes. what it, I was just thinking the same thing. Because when it's you pull, good, it's good for if you're going westbound, you turn 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 right. You know, it's given further along um, sight view along that uh, approach. But, but if you're taking a, uh, a left to come out of there to head eastbound, you're, you're really close to that corner where it's a blind spot, essentially. 
I, I guess I'm not completely um, for the the set, the westerly driveway. So you you yeah. can't see the gap from that along this way. No, we you we've shifted see. currently. You cannot. So this is shifted as as Jill mentioned. We are shifting oh, it closer it to Lake Ave. So you are moving further along the curve so that you can see around. Um, so you're pushing it towards the curve. We're so pushing can, it towards Lake Ave. Right now, that uh, are coming around that curve. Right. right. There is like it's almost like a. Right. We come, people cars cars come around that corner and it's quick. We're moving it down. I can I can see that. Yeah. But the expand you know the expansion of the green mm -hmm. space that you have, you can see it. It's much right. further along down. It's, Correct. It's, it's, it's a lot lot different. Yes. I have a question regarding the asphalt. In the, in the last few years, we've had that repeated problem where that asphalt's been collapsing. Um, have we addressed that and, and found a solution to that? So, that so um, and, and Jill may be able to answer this more. I think you're referring to the tire rutting. Yes. So yes. Um, one of the issues with a traffic signal is that you know cars, large trucks, are, are coming to a stop. And some may be traveling faster than perhaps they should and, and have to break. And so that's causing the rutting in, in the, the pavement. So there is new um, asphalt mix called Super Pave that um, helps to address some of that. But that's, I, I think, another benefit of a roundabout is, is you're not necessarily stopping Coming the traffic. In. I mean, in an ideal, ideal condition, you know, the traffic is moving through, so you get less of that wear on the asphalt. You get less of queuing of vehicles, so there are air quality um, improvements because of a roundabout. Because again, the, the whole goal is to keep the traffic moving Correct. instead of having to stop. <coughs> That's a tough location. I, it's, it's hard to make it work, but it, it's pretty good. And my only question was, and this comes up, it was the, the common, um, the middle ent egress and uh, entrance and egress. It's just a tight one. And to cut across that and, to, and come into the uh, the roundabout is kind of, it's just, it's a tough one. I don't know if there's any easy way around that one. But, um, much, looks much better though, it does. Thank you, Thank you. John. Catherine, so, um, so uh, my concern is just looking at, from the Dunkin' Donuts and Nashby Country Store, um, the, and I've seen this in a lot of these new, you know, little, um, the curbs that are put up, if they can't, if they can be a little less rigid, um, so this way, cars are coming in and out, and truck. If there's a delivery going on, there's an ability to, you know, I don't know if you can have curbs that are a little more softer that rather than just a straight rigid, because I could see a lot of issues with someone trying to cut it a little bit too close and. I, I see people going up and over curbs, and, and it happened just on the edge of Contour Road with it was a new road, and someone right up and over the curb. I don't know what happened to that car, but <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. I do, yes. Um, so it just if there's a way to make a, the curbs, you know, softer, give it a 45 degree angle rather than just a mm -hmm. 90 degree mm -hmm. sharp edge, um, I, I think that will help, you know, address some concerns with. In and out of the parking lots. Andrew? The only question is the shared spaces, would those be town maintained? Plowing and snow and ice and all that kind of stuff? Um, that is something that we will have to discuss with with the two property, the three property owners. Um, but they'd be public ways? They are not designed as public they're ways. They're not designed as public ways, but they're on town layout, right? Correct. Okay. Town, pro town property, I should say, not layout. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of people call today, too, and talk about this. They think it's a good idea, but they just we just want to make sure that if it's done, we do it right. Okay, one or two related questions. What's, if we said, yeah, we like this, to take it to the next level, what's a reasonable time frame for something like this to go from where it is now to town meeting to authorize? And do you have any any sense at all of cost range? I have no idea. <laughs> By summer? Yeah. Um, for a 
designed for construction, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be aggressive. Um, okay. So I, I think that's something that I'll, I would have to review with the town manager to take a look at what funding is available to complete the design and okay. then, right, I guess what path does that take? Does it come, I mean, during the design process, I would anticipate that there would be, you know, additional public hearings to, mm -hmm. to solicit input. I did reach out to the police and fire departments, so they are aware of the project. Um, they didn't have any comments other than obviously they'd like to be involved with the design. Right. Um, You're thinking about chapter 90 as opposed to TIP funded? It, it, I would not, having gone through the TIP process for Route 151 I mean, and, and knowing yeah. the, the queue to get a project on there, I would, I would say it would have to be town funded. Okay. Yes. Tom? One, one, and I saw this and I think I know the answer. Pedestrian. How, how, how do we, I see the dock and walkways. Um, is that going to be more difficult for pedestrians to get walk across either of those streets? Um, to grab a cup of coffee or a, um, a soda or a sandwich. It mm. looks like it's, it, how, do you, how do you slow that down? Do we have a crosswalk? Can we put a crosswalk there? are three there? of them I see there in yeah. the gray. Yep. But yeah, I, so it, it just seems very difficult. You know, I think it's just really more, I can zoom in a little bit too so people can see it. So it's really more the, the nature of the speeds of roundabouts and people going slower and they're able to, um, pay attention to more about what's going on and so they see those pedestrians that they don't always see as they're driving through intersections. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the one benefit to an intersection is that you, you have a signalized crossing, but it could be higher speed. So if somebody runs a red light, um, that pedestrian it crash is more likely to be fatal than with the roundabout with the lower speeds. Um, we see the much. I, initially, I thought you had said 25 to 30 miles an hour in the roundabout. 25, yep. So yeah, we design them for so 25 miles per hour. That's moving pretty good. Right. And they so, so it is still state law that people are to yield to pedestrians right, right, in, right. In, in the roadway. So, I, I, I do um, get that. Right. And, and as the, again, this is a conceptual design, but there are the islands, um, the green, you know, does provide a haven. So it's not... You know, someone isn't having to run across, you know, two lanes of traffic. They, they are able to stop safely and wait if they need to. But it is state law that, um, you know, vehicles are supposed to no, yield to I, pedestrians. I agree. It's, it's just a tough, the tough location to uh, provide everybody. Right. Okay, piece. I'm going to open up the public hearing to the audience. If anyone? Tom, do you want to speak? Where do you want me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit down because I'm getting old. Um, at the, the beginning of the meeting, it was said that this is, uh, was first brought to you in October. The roundabout here was actually brought to you about 20 years ago. I think Wayne will remember. And uh, it's recommended in the comprehensive plan as the top of the list of places to put roundabouts in Mashpee. And that's, uh, that's been there since the 90s. Um, in terms of, by the way, um, I'm Tom Fudala, for the record, uh, charter member of the American Planning Association, AICP, and a member of the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Um, I spent most of my career as a transportation planner before I came to Mashpee and had to do everything. Um, I have a couple of comments on this particular plan. Oh, by the way, the other, the other, the other qualification is I live down that way, and the queues go past <laughs> South Sandwich Road. They, they, they go way past where we're shown, you know? <laughs> South Sandwich Road blocks, uh, gets blocked up, and, and mm -hmm. uh, Route 130 beyond that at rush hour, so that's a, that's a real long wait, and it's because what do you know there about is no the left turn lane, <laughs> and the, the signal, uh, the, the way it's timed is that you can get maybe five <clears throat> cars that can make a left turn before that gets cut off, and everybody else has to back up, so they stack up. Um, any case, um, so I'm absolutely 100% in favor of a roundabout here. Uh, just having come back from two weeks in Scotland, 90% of the intersections in the whole country are roundabouts. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're just, they just work much better. And uh, I was driving the whole time on the wrong side of the road, and it's <laughs> still the best way to go. Um, the, the, uh, in terms of this particular... 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, the whole rest of the world uses roundabouts. And you know, Barnstable's got three of them and Sandwich's got one, so you know what they're like. Um, the comments I have on this particular sketch, acknowledging that I'm 100% in favor of roundabout, is that I don't see the need for this big bypass lane from Great Neck Road North to Main Street. Um, that, th this roundabout should work without that extra lane there. And, uh, and David mentioned the fact that you're gonna have a merge uh, that's gonna be a problem. The, the, one of the problems and one of the accident situations you have now at the intersection is you've got the, the right split and people have to crane their neck to look back. And in the meantime, either they get hit in the back by somebody because they stopped or they hit the guy in front of them that stopped to do the same thing. And I've, I've had two people in my family have that accident. Um, so I don't think that uh, flying right turn there is necessary. You can see it uses up a lot more area and it also means more area for the pedestrians to cross. Um, and you'll notice that the, the crosswalks are set back from the intersection. That's the way these are designed so that the cars are basically, you know, coming Straight. diagonally to the pedestrians so they can see them. They're not further on where they're now um, dealing with how do we get into the roundabout. So that's why they're set back a car length, basically, from the roundabout itself. Um, so, so, in any case, that's why that's there. But I, I don't think you need all of that, and you can see how it basically cuts off the town hall driveway on the bottom there, too. It's, um, that, that should be looked at because I, in all the roundabouts in Scotland, I've, I've never seen a bypass like that. Uh, on, and this is much more heavily traveled roads. I mean, even even the motorways, their version of the interstate highways, they're inter they basically use roundabouts to interchange, you know, traffic on those things. They're usually multi-lane roundabouts, but in any case, they don't, they don't use these bypasses. Um, the only other concern I would suggest is that the moving of the Dunkin' Donuts driveway westward, and Wayne will remember this, that land was bought uh, as open space with land bank funds, so you'd have to look at where the actual property line is before you start cutting into it with a road because that may violate the, the, uh, the whole purpose of the, open, the, the land bank act and the, and the open space that was bought with that land bank money. But uh, uh, I say it's about time. I don't know if, I, Oh, I know you were around, Wayne. I don't know how, how long you guys have been around, but uh, when, when, when the intersection was first put in as a singleized exit section instead of a roundabout, uh, after the previous DPW director told you it was gonna cost twice as much to do a roundabout, where in reality it cost twice as much to do the signalized intersection, within a couple of weeks, the school bus brakes, lost its brakes and knocked down the traffic signals. Uh, on the far side of the intersection there, and they're out for a long time. That brings up another issue, two things. One is that um, traffic lights use energy. Um, in the comprehensive plan, it talks about three to $5,000 a year used for all of the electronics involved in, it, in the traffic signal setup. Uh, these don't use energy. And correlated with that is when you have a storm, these things still work. You don't have all the light, the traffic lights out in a disaster. So, um, you know, the more of these you can put around town, the better. They're more efficient, as was mentioned. They reduce uh, traffic accidents by 50 to 90 percent uh, over over signalized or or uh, stop sign intersections, and um, uh, um, I say go for it. Good. Just Thank get you, rid Tom. of that excess thing because it, it's making it a monster instead of a. You don't need that. For this roundabout, the traffic doesn't deserve it. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Putting that back on your pillow tonight, Tom. <laughs> Lynn, come on up. <clears throat> Lynn Barbie Surf Drive. Thank you. Um, I couldn't quite hear everything that you said, Mr. Hare, about the crosswalks, but for some of us who can't scurry across the road, or for somebody who might have a baby in a stroller, or somebody in a wheelchair, this looks impossible to me to get across 
the street. Uh, unless you have, like we have at Great Neck South and Donna's, lights that you can push that alert the cars that somebody's crossing because otherwise cars won't stop. I mean, they won't see you. Imagine it's dark, right? They won't see you and so we have to, I think if we're going to, we can't have crosswalks that you have to walk up over because that's not accessible. So we need to have something where you, we can alert the cars that somebody's crossing in those crosswalks and move them as far back from the roundabout as possible because people will be watching for traffic in the roundabout, not watching for pedestrians. And maybe there's not a lot of pedestrians, but I have seen, in the, particularly in the summertime, people going from like the park over to Dunkin' Donuts and, and yeah. we know what happened on Route 28 when a 90-year-old woman tried to cross the street in the dark. We don't want to have accidents that are involving people, pedestrians being hit. So we have to have some lights alerting the cars to stop at the crosswalks. Thank you. Thank you. Mary? Good evening, Mary Wagan, um, Schumann Road. So I know this intersection well, because I commute through it every day. So this would be a great improvement. Um, I go straight, I come from the west and I go straight through down to South Sandwich. And I am almost hit in that intersection once a week uh, for people coming the other way, taking a left on Great Neck Road North. That light doesn't have enough time to allow the traffic with this big long, that people have been waiting, usually four cars can get through safely and then it's time to cut off the people coming uh, from the west. So this is great. Um, I do think that we uh, need to spend a lot of time and invest in the pedestrian walkways. I do see, I walk down in that area during the good weather. I do see a lot of pedestrians using this area. Um, I am happy to see um, a crosswalk um, to the left of the rotary to Dunks. Because people walk down and they don't go through the existing crosswalk system now. They just cross right, a, right. right away. Um, they just jaywalk. Um, uh, the, I, I do like Tom's idea of dropping that auxiliary lane. Mm -hmm. um, that will slow traffic down. I see that as see, being seen as an express route. Um, people are ready in the existing intersection, they already have that, they already use that, ex, let, that merge as an express route and they go fast and I've almost been hit that way too. Um, the last thing is, um, you know, we just convened all the regulatory boards regarding our water quality. So um, I'm assuming that drainage, new drainage systems will be introduced because of this configuration. And we might want to take the lead on this and have some type of stormwater control that's removing nitrogen from this, whether it's veg vegetated swales or whatever we can do. But um, I think we should go for it and uh, lead the way on that as well to uh, have the stormwater management remove nitrogen. Thank you, Mary. That's it. Thanks. I'd like to hear from the business owner. Come on up. Country store. Speak, speak into the mic. Okay. I'm from the Mashpee Country Store. And Ishaline. your name? Isheline Ahmad. I just want to know how long would that take, the project would take? Uh, oh, the construction um, of the yeah, project. construction toward, because we have a business there. Right, and, and it would interrupt. It's going to slow right. people from getting in and out. It's just going to have one way to get in and out. What about the other way or going from Great Neck mm -hmm. Road? Catherine, when you start the project, how long would it interrupt the businesses? Um, I, I don't have an exact answer, but we certainly recognize that, that there open. are adjacent properties that we would have to make sure that um, we provide them under, un, 
uninterrupted access. Okay. So the, the construction, you know, may last a construction season or two, um, you know, stopping for summer. We would not do the work in the summer. Um, we would not do the work in the winter. So it may <clears throat> extend into two construction seasons. Um, but we certainly would, would make sure if, if we move forward, um, like we do with any road project, that we're accommodating with the, the abutters. Because last year they had a road project there. And during the day we had no customer. Until in the evening when they, they're gone from the project, then customer could get into the um, business. So for that long, what's gonna happen with the business for that long time? Go ahead. Um, looking at the proposal, uh, the plan in front of us, you know, I would suggest phasing it so you do the work in front of Dunkin' Donuts and get the people into the corner store to ensure prior to any of the construction on the intersection, um, and that would at least allow them to stay open while the actual intersection is being worked mm -hmm. on. Um, and I think that would have to be a must. Um, yes, definitely. You know, yep. to accommodate the business, we want to ensure that you know they don't lose anything um, as a result of the project. Because this is right. just talking about it. We're yeah. still working yeah. on yeah. the. Yeah. That sounds problems. like a good idea. Yeah, you know? but that does sound perfect. So for that project that you were referencing, was the driveway closed for a time for construction? Um, no, or they had construction work going on. Around in the area, yep. Traffic was detoured to different way, and mm -hmm. nobody could get into the business or out. Okay. Yeah, so we could definitely make sure the construction's phased so that access is maintained at all times and it, it may be something too where we look to add additional signage so it's clear to people driving through that the store is still open and accessible. But we would also keep you informed at every step of the way when they if this was to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that sounds great. It sounds you know you're accommodating and make doing the parking area first and the signage mm -hmm. great idea. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Brian? Um, Brian Whedon. Um, I actually live on 130. Um, my cousin was actually hit here by a tractor trailer, and only then did the town put the crosswalks in. Um, but I also want to take this opportunity to give a history lesson. Um, first and foremost, considering this is in the historical district, I would um, suggest and hope that we would get a recommendation from the historical district commission on this project. Um, but once again, I feel as if we're catering to the businesses and not the residents. Um, one house in this property is one of our Eagle clan mothers, um, Jan Hendricks, um, who lives there on the property. It's been in her family hands forever. Um, it's never left her family property. And then the other property is Mr. Frank Hicks's, um, who is a road is named after him for a reason. And without him, I don't think many of us would be sitting here today. Um, this area is also archaeologically sensitive. Um, there was gravestones that were there that were moved um, from the original property, um, which was the Cowett property, which was before it was taken for taxes, which is the property that we're talking about right next door to us. Um, this proposed site is also in the middle of the old town hall and the fire station that stood mm -hmm. where, that, where the entrance would be um, for that parking lot. Um, and I feel as if um, this is a great step, but what about um, the intersections at 130 and South Sandwich Road um, and the intersections at Meeting House Road and Great Neck Road North? Um, how will this help? Um, if this also moves forward, I feel as if the town is yet again, um, we're having paved paradise to put in a parking lot. When is enough enough? Our waters are hurting and it's because of overdevelopment, which is also the problem now with our overpopulated roadways. Um, this is why the tribe should be part of any and all discussions when it comes to changing the character and history of our town. Uh, we share this same community as our ancestors have done for over the past 400 years. Um, first, you changed Pocknett Field on 130. Then you changed Collins Lot to the now community park. And now um, our old Adequin Hotel is now the site of our community garden. Um, I don't believe this is a bad idea, but I also want the town to take the appropriate steps when it comes to the National Native American Grave Repatriations Act and working with the tribe sovereign to sovereign. Thank you. Any other questions? Come on up. I wonder if we should move State that. your name. <clears throat> My name is Margaret Correa. 
I wonder if that roundabout should be moved over here to the right so we could have two lanes because you said you want to do it right. And looking forward, it's likely we'll have more people. Uh, so if this is a very busy intersection, we should have two lanes like they're proposing at the Mashby Rotary. And it'll be easier because right now, those people coming down from a great neck and making that right, they're going to fly mm -hmm. still, especially now. I mean, you can just right. see it. I mean, right now, they have kind of the light stops them a little bit. But if they don't have a light, what's going to stop them? And especially during rainy weather, coming down fast, I think if it should be moved over and there should be two lanes. Okay, thank you. And I wonder if you took into consideration the, what they're going to be doing to the Mashpee Rotary, how that's going to affect mm -hmm. the traffic. Yep. Did you? Uh, yes, I think that, I think it's, it's, the improvements that they're making there is going to allow more people through that intersection. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we'll still see this the same numbers. So that is taken into account with the future traffic projections that we're using when we're analyzing this. Well, really? OK. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, Margaret. Thank you. Mary? And then close the um, so I think that when there was, this was first proposed, there was comment um, about tractor trailers, 18-wheelers coming down from uh, Mashpee Rotary mm -hmm. and taking that, that turn onto a left onto Route 130. So I'm assuming you can engineer that so that will work. Um, I just think that um, this is the kind of change in the roadway where it might be good to announce that there's going to be change or there has been a change for a while mm -hmm. um, up, you know, um, in between the rotary and Great Neck, uh, you know, from the rotary down, the Mashby rotary to this area and keep it up for a whole year. <laughs> because um, as you know, some people don't come down here except for the summer and that includes deliveries. And I can just see a tractor trailer going, whoa, and kind of, uh, tipping over. When that inside of the rotary, is that going to be so that if, if somebody has to, they can ride up on it? Exactly. Is that yes. how it works? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Tom? There's going to be many more hearings on this yeah, before I we... <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know that you don't have to let us all know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just to follow up, um, again, a number of the comments bring me back to the, the disadvantages of that speedway between Great Neck Road North and going east mm -hmm. on I think Route 130. I, it doesn't belong there. It's unnecessary. Right. The traffic can easily be handled in the roundabout itself. And a um, uh, lady mentioned, you know, looks scary for pedestrians. Well, you take that whole thing out of there, and it's a much shorter distance. Mm -hmm. you, you're only going across two lanes, not three, to make that that crossing there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in terms of the same thing, in terms of the the graves that are uh, believed or you know were thought to be there, that's the area where uh, the issue came up uh, in the past that uh, I know Chucky e. Green thought there might have been some burials there. And uh, if you don't do that, you're not encroaching on that property uh, that may be sensitive in terms of that. And just looking at the scale of it, you take that out, it's a much smaller scale. It's much more appropriate for the neighborhood. It's not much bigger, if any bigger, than the existing intersection. And uh, what was the tree that we used to be in the middle of the, the intersection there? We had to replant the, what was it? A okay, Tom, tree? we can we can go over all that. I know. I'm just saying, <laughs> there's a lot of, re <laughs> hey, that's not leave time. I'm going to leave it right now so I can see it. Um, that right lane, there's a lot of reasons. You've heard reasons why it's a bad thing. That's, it's just makes it too big. It's, uh, it's easier for pedestrians without that. Get rid of it and you're all set. Okay, thank you. I'll make a motion to close public hearing. Second. Roll call, John. Yes. 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 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Let's uh, make a subsequent motion that we ask the DPW and town manager office to come up with a plan for funding or additional design, taking into consideration the comments that we got tonight, and come back to us with, with a schedule. Sure. Second. Roll call, John. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Great presence. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Discussion and approval of the extension of the annual contracts for trash, recycling service, and rental of portable toilets. Department of Public Works, Director Catherine Lurich. These are uh, two of our contracts that run on a calendar year rather than a fiscal year. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the second year of a, a bid that we received. So just looking for uh, approval to extend for another year. Hey, Tom. Tom, Tom, please. If you want to talk, go out in the hall. Thank you. Go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> so this is a second year of a, a two-year bid uh, for trash uh, recycling services at the town facilities, as well as uh, rental of portable toilets mm -hmm. for our beaches and special events. Any questions? Nope. Uh, no. Concerns? I don't have any questions. Make a motion we award trash recycling services to Cavosa, the rental of portable toilets to PNSIA sanitation as recommended. Second. Yeah. Roll call, Tom. Yes. David. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Discussion approval of extension of order of taking and order of betterment for the following Chestnut Street, Cedar Street, Devon Street, Ash Street, Fourth Bond, and Jeaner's Way. Catherine, everybody is uh, okay with this? Yes, this is the, the roadway project that was approved at the October town, town meeting. meeting. Okay. Uh, so this is putting that on record um, and we would be looking to start construction sometime in the spring. Make a motion that we take, approve the order of taking uh, and betterment assessment for Chestnut Street, Cedar Street, Devon Street, Ash Street, Hawthorne Street, and Genius Way. Second. Okay. Roll call. Tom? Yes. David? Yes. 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 Before you. you leave, Catherine, we want to say a big thank you to you and to your workers at DPW for the fantastic job at the Rotary. Thank you. Good. I hope everyone enjoys it. Yeah, it's great. Amazing. It Beautiful. looks amazing. Well done. Okay. Discussion and approval of memorandum of agreement with the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribes Department of Natural <coughs> Resources and the Southeast New England Program, SNEP. Smith. Ashley? Good evening, Ashley Fisher, Town of Ashby's Department of Natural Resource Director. I'm here with Dale, who's the Associate uh, Assistant Director for the Tribes Natural Resource Department. How are you tonight? Um, so we're here today in front of the board to ask um, that you recommend and sign off on the memorandum, memorandum of agreement with the uh, Southeast New England program. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna be working in conjunction with our MVP project. And I'm just gonna let Dale explain a little bit about the project. Uh, good evening. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Dale Oakley, Master Wampanoag Tribe. Um, so this past July, the tribe was awarded a uh, partnership opportunity through the uh, Southeast New England program, or the SNEP network, uh, in the purpose, and also and the University of Southern Maine, uh, to evaluate and implement measures to address nutrient pollution in Santua Pond and to assist in capacity building to plan and manage water quality issues related to the stormwater in the vicinity of the Santua Pond on a watershed scale. Um, the proposed scope is similar to the uh, application and award the town received through the uh, MVP program. So in order to eliminate redundancy and duplication of work, the Mashpee DNR and the, Mas uh, the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribes NRD Propose that that both departments work in conjunction on both grants awarded to our community. And Madam Chair, yes. um, the town council has reviewed this in mm -hmm. terms of its scope and its terms, and recommends that you authorize me to sign off on this. Oh, great! Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved. We authorize Second. the town manager to sign on behalf of the town. 
Do I have a second? Second. second. Roll call, Tom? Yes. David? Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion and certification of a hiring process for public safety dispatcher, Delaney Hessel. Yes, all of the uh, terms and conditions and protocols and procedures have been followed, and I tested that and request that cert uh, the board certify. I make a motion we certify the hiring process for public safety dispatcher, Delaney Hazel. Okay. Roll call, John? Yes. John. Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, discussion and response relative to Selectman Gottlieb's 39 questions for the Mass Army National Guard and Joint Base Cape Cod. Um, we did have communication uh, this afternoon. I believe the board received a slideshow that was going to be presented uh, tonight. Long story short, um, this was uh, coming in at the 11th hour, and I did not feel that uh, either the board or even staff had an opportunity to review this in advance. We expected a little sooner than uh, we received it. In addition, the answers to the questions were not within the slideshow, so I suggested that it may be postponed, or otherwise uh, I anticipated we might be here until 11 o'clock. Exactly. So uh, after having the assistant manager speak with Colonel Porter, uh, they decided to defer. Thank you. So I have nothing to uh, present, or they have nothing to present. And they're not here because of mutual agreement. I, I would suggest that we do maybe send them a letter, <clears throat> consider at the meeting on the 20th, two things. One is, by all means, they want to come in and do the presentation they gave us today to talk about the gun range attributes that it ought to be scheduled and publicized so that people I want have, it to be like a public people have so notice and oppor opportunity yeah, to review agreed. the materials and comment no question and right. have it be a real public discussion as opposed exactly. to a commercial and secondly um, nothing in the presentation was responsive to any one of the questions I asked That's right. um, so perhaps <laughs> use that as an opportunity to remind them that um, we want answers. these were the questions and uh, you know I understand if they don't want to provide them in writing because then written records have a way of traveling around and coming back to bite people, but at least come in public and address them. Exactly. I agree. So I'll draft something for the board to consider for the 20th. That would 20th. be great, Andrew. Thank you. Discussion and possible action to support the Cape Cod Municipality Municipal Police Academy. This is what we talked about at our last meeting. Right. Um, the only thing I can report to the board is uh, I did receive a call from Mark Forrest, who is a uh, county commissioner, um, and it was a very uh, constructive uh, discussion, and uh, basically this is going to be brought up at the county delegate level and also at the county commissioner's level. Uh, I did speak to uh, a chief down Cape. I've obviously spoken with Chief Carline. Uh, the sentiment is that this is uh, a organization uh, that is definitely needed as far as the academy being offered on Cape. Um, however, having said that, there is no question that there must be many checks and balances uh, instituted uh, that provides transparency and a level of comfort at the county level. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, again, I don't think uh, I would want to see the baby thrown out with the bathwater. Uh, this is an opportunity to fix a problem in order to continue uh, what I consider to be uh, a regional concept that uh, makes sense and uh, otherwise as I mentioned at the last meeting uh, we're, we're in a situation where we're sending recruits to Springfield or, yeah. or wherever and that is counterproductive to and cost. Uh, cost effectiveness right not to mention the convenience so Tom, you, uh, you were looking for input I, yeah, that's what I was looking for I, I mean I know how I feel about it I'm supportive of the of the Academy um, I think we ought to be looking for money from the state and from any recruits outside of our area as well to help knock down the total cost. To I mean, based on the little reading I did, I mean, I, you know, 
I'll defer to the professionals to say that we need this function locally. My only request would be they just professionalize it a little bit and have an actual budget and tell people where the money's coming from, right. how it's going to get paid so exactly. that everybody knows what they're signing up for. Other than that, you know, I think it was sloppy in its initial iteration in right. terms of how it was set up, but you know, if you can fix that. The need is by there. By all means, the need should be met. Right. The, the need is there. We just need to get that squared away. Yeah, they just need to professionalize and have right. a thank, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Because, I mean, I, I'm, I sit with you, and I, I'm a delegate, but um, I, I asked for your input so that I'd have a better feeling of Excuse of me, ladies. Ladies, if you want to talk, go out in the, uh, the hallway, please. Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. That, that's, I think I finished, but no, I appreciate the input just so, it, you know, you know where I stand and, mm -hmm. and I think we all feel the same way. It is a necessity and we, nobody wants to have an officer of police do yeah. improve well and not being fully trained. Um, this is an opportunity to keep it local and make sure that um, not only he, but everybody else in this area will be thoroughly trained. Mm -hmm. I think the, the primary problem is there was some seed money uh, to get it going mm -hmm. and then nobody had it figured out in terms of where the continuation funds were going right. to come from yeah and whether it be the state whether it be the county resource or whether the towns are chipping in more I think there's a way to make this successful but obviously a lot Blame of things have to figure be it out exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, communicate. So I'm going to be. Do you want, do you want to vote? So, so <laughs> I'm I'm going to be uh, addressing this uh, with the managers on Thursday. So, okay. is it is it fair for me to say that uh, my, my, board, my board, board supports, supports it? the idea of you know a, a properly funded, budgeted, and accountable police training Perfect. academy? Perfect. I can take it. Second. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Roll call. Yes. 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 Also. Thank you. What direction you go? Okay, communication and correspondence. Uh, old business, new business. Okay, liaison reports. No, I mean, the only thing is, you know, Sewer and Ann's here, you know, mm -hmm. we're, and Meredith working hard on getting bid packages put together and prepping recommendations for I next week's, everybody's looking forward next to week's conversation on exactly. follow up on wastewater. So, exactly. John? No. Nope. I do Good. have one thing. Uh, we did the dinners through the chamber for Thanksgiving, and um, we had quite a few. And there was a lot of sickness. People couldn't get out, and that was good. They stayed home. And um, we had a discussion at the chamber about doing dinners for, for Christmas this year. We've never done it before, um, and we've asked a few people to um, step up and this community is unbelievable because the people who have stepped up to help uh, for the cost of the dinners and to deliver them for Christmas is amazing. If anyone is ill or home alone, please call Katie at the, Cape, at the Mashpee Chamber and get on the list for, your, for a dinner. Um, we'd appreciate it if you would. And not to forget, the parade is Saturday night at 5.30 in the Commons. And now we'll have the town manager's updates. Okay, you mentioned the parade uh, this Saturday. Uh, today and over the weekend, there were seven new positive COVID cases. Uh, we have the budget books ready. Uh, this represents the uh, department head request, so we're going to be distributing that to the board. And also, it'll be distributed to the finance committee on Thursday. I uh, want to point out that uh, Planning Board Member Mary Wagan requested the distribution of the conclusion of the AG's investigation into a citizen complaint. I have the letter from the AG's office that's going to be uh, delivered to the board uh, this evening. Uh, the fiscal year 22 tax rate has been certified by the Bureau of Accounts within the Department of Revenue. And uh, on Wednesday, December 8th at 1130 a.m., uh, Comcast said that they're going to be celebrating the opening of a new Xfinity store in Hyannis Cape Cod Mall along with the announcement of our Community Impact Partnership with the Cape and Islands Veterans Outreach Center in Mashpee and they invited the board and we just received that today. Are they keeping the store and sandwich open? They didn't mention anything about sandwich. And 
Did I forget anything? I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay. I make a motion on the board go into executive session pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2 to discuss strategy with respect to negotiation of personal services contract for Police Chief Scott Carline. The Board of Selectmen will reconvene in open session. I declare that an open meeting on these issues may have a detrimental impact, effect on the negotiation position of the town. Thank you. You need a second on that? Yes. Second. Roll call? Yes. 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 Thank you.